now we need to decide where we want that cube to go and how quickly. So if we're at 24-ish frames a second, then, um, what, 48 frames or so? I don't need to be all that exact. Um, there, 48 frames per sec, uh, 48 frames later, rather, we could have the cube in some other place. And in this case, let's just move it across the camera, off, off, off the frame again, off of the frame right. And, and we'll position the cube there at 48 frames. And once again, the, the way to make sure that Blender knows that we want the cube to be there at this point in time is to add a keyframe. And how do you do that? If you said I, you were correct. I gives you the lo I gives you the location menu or the the keyframe insert keyframe menu rather, and there's the location, and we'll add it. And sure enough, there we get our new diamonds up here. And look at this. This is exciting. Lots of activity here in our little graph uh, editor view thing. If you've used other motion graphic applications, this is probably going to be quite familiar to you. This looks familiar, right? You've got movements happening, and sure enough, if you click on the keyframe, you get bez Bezier handles that you can then you can then manipulate. Let's not manipulate them yet. I think it'll be cooler if we see it without any customization, and, and then we'll view it with. So, really, if that was all of our animation, and you can see that I'm clicking on this um, this timeline here, and and everything's moving. So that's our animation right there, right like that. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty basic. So we know that our animation is 48 frames long. We know that because we set it ourselves, and we can look. Now in our playback region here. This is our timeline. It says, if you look here, it says it starts at frame 1 and ends on 250, which means that we're going to, that it's essentially, it's going to run past 48 for another, what, 200 frames? That's kind of boring. So we should make that less. And the way that you can manipulate that, it's actually an invisible slider, so you can just click and drag left and adjust, and you can even see, I mean, you can see this dark gray area, that's the part where the playhead will not venture, so you can just kind of slide that all the way down to, I don't know, let's, let's, let's go for 60, 65, whatever. You can also just type it in manually, so if I really wanted 60 return, I can just type that in, but I, a lot of times for those adjustments, unless it's precision work, I, I just, I click and drag and it becomes a slider, and it works. So now to play, we can do Alt-A, but let's start at zero. We are at zero. Okay. So we'll hit Alt-A, and there we go. And you should kind of be looking up here in the camera view, or we could, of course, just switch over to the camera view here. And there you go. That's our animation so far. All right. Like I say, it's pretty basic, and we're not going to make it a whole lot more complex than that to be honest but let's let's just for kicks let's look at what happens if we if we manipulate some of these things here so this is the path of our oh and by the way i'm i'm moving this around with the middle mouse button so if you recall which i'm sure you do that you can manipulate that you can move your view around here with the middle mouse button that i just hit 0 to get into my camera view then I can also do the same thing in, in really any other window. It's, it's, it's quite consistent that way. You can just kind of move your view around with the middle mouse button. It's quite nice. Okay, so anyway, and you can zoom in. Just, again, there's a lot of consistency, actually, in Blender. You, you'll be amazed. So if I hit, if I hit that keyframe, this is the x-axis. I don't really know how much... I need to do with that, but I could. Let's let's just try it. So this is obviously a Bezier curve. So if I hit G, told you there was a lot of consistency. And let's just uh, let's just kind of ease that out a little bit, like that. Do the same thing with the whoop, the Y axis. And there should be a Z 
Oh, the, actually, I guess there isn't a z-axis here. I mean, there's there's no movement on that, I guess. So, yeah, all right. So we've just, we've just, we, we should, I think we've just eased those out a little bit. We should see a difference there. So I'll z zip us back to zero, just kind of scrubbing it back manually, and then hitting Alt-A to play. Yeah, and you you can see how it kind of, rather than just hitting a stop, it, it slows down there at the end. Yeah, I'm sure we could make that more drastic, even if we wanted to. There we go, look at that. That gives it a lot more... I mean, that's partly because I, I, I moved the y-axis, which which I didn't 100% intend to do, but, but see how I gave the lower portion of this animation a little bit of a curve, and then the upper portion of that animation a little bit of a curve? It's not just a, a line straight straight up. It's It's got that little curve to it. And that that's forcing the Y to, in fact, we could even look at it from the top view. You see how it's kind of going in a circle there. And you can definitely see it uh, now slowing down there at the end. It doesn't just screech to a halt. It comes to a gradual halt along the x-axis. And that's, again, because we did we did make that nice curve right up there. And that's called easing things out. Because in real life, normally, unless you're in a, a speeding car, God forbid, and you hit a wall, then then you're coming to a complete stop very, very abruptly. But in real life, in normal, happy life, you, you're, you're going to put on the brakes and you're going to kind of come to a gradual halt. And that's what we're trying to emulate there, because in animation, you, you want that. You want things to look natural, not not calculated. So that's uh, that's that's the basics of animation, really. There's, there's not that much more to it. Um, I mean... There's a whole lot more to it, but but that is that's that's the idea. It's it's simple keyframing animation, and now you know how to do it in Blender. For homework, perhaps it would be good to try keyframing other attributes of of these of these objects, for instance. So if we uh, say that at I don't know at um, at the forty eighth frame. Well, let's start at zero, I guess. You can see me uh, kind of manipulating this current frame box here. If you click on it and type in a frame, you can get to an exact frame pretty quickly. So if we say that um, here on the cube, the, the cube should be that size, the current size. You can see in our dope sheet here that now we've got a scaling keyframe. And again, it's judging itself by its its relationship to the x and the y z axis. That's pretty standard. But let's say by the forty eighth frame or so, it depend it, it it all depends on whether you need it to be completely accurate or not. Obviously, a lot of times you do need it to be quite accurate. So we'll move to the forty eighth frame by typing it in manually here at the bottom, forty eight. And uh, let's let's say that now we want the size to have. Uh, Increase well, we don't really want it to increase because then it gets onto my camera and I don't want that. Let's make it smaller. Now it's a little itty bitty cube. Now all we need to do, of course, is keyframe that because we're at the, the right time, we have it the right position. We want to keyframe it, so we hit I for our keyframe thing. We say, okay, we want to keyframe the scale of the object. So now we've got two different keyframes for scale. And let's switch to our camera view by hitting zero. And hit play, which is down here at the bottom, or just hit Alt A, which is what normally uh, people would do. So you just hit Alt A, and it gets small. So you see that you can actually, uh, you can actually animate quite a few different properties of an object over the same amount of time and you get really dynamic things happening. And in fact, I don't know if, if it's an optical illusion just to my eye or if you're seeing this as well, 
but it, it appears that the the curve almost has changed because I keep seeing I, I see it getting smaller, so it it feels to my eye like it's going further into the background, whereas before it felt like it was going into the back and then back up front. So it you know the the 3D space can really be tricky, especially when you start scaling things different ways. You get lots of different effects. And of course, this is just the beginning. This is um, just the, the very tip of, of animation, but, but I think it's a good start. Great, I will talk to you next time.